The earliest that I can remember trying to be a writer was when I was in second grade. I remember making a book of Ninja Turtles on surfboards singing songs. I stapled it at school and then later that night I put it in the magazine rack with the other books to be sold at the deli mart. My mom wanted to move to a warmer climate and so that summer she got a brochure for an apartment complex where we would move that fall. The brochure showed the layout of a two-bedroom apartment with a sliding glass door and gated patio. On paper as well as to you reading this, it sounds like a nice place to live, a gated community with two pools, a tennis court, a pond and a covered bridge. This was long before the internet where you could read reviews of people who actually lived there. This was years after we came and went, but let's see what they had to say. Don't move into an apartment here. You will get robbed. You will not sleep. You will have many roaches. Repairs not done. People outside all night like vampires. Evidence the next morning. Beer bottles. Cans. Liquor on the ground everywhere. Gunshots on a regular basis, and sometimes people actually get shot. This is the third shooting there in the past year. This time the person was shot three times. This place has become a breeding ground for baby mamas and drugs. Another Section 8 project. It's a shame. They just found two bodies into different vacant apartments. Security guards are everywhere and all of them smoke weed while half of them snort cocaine. I broke my lease because of the conditions there. As many of the former reviews have said the roaches are the least of your problems. First off the crime is despicable. Despite the 24 hour police presence there. My neighbor is currently in the news for kicking his former girlfriend's door in and setting her on fire. They both had apartments in the complex. If you are a weed smoker there are several pharmaceutical engineers there to service you. Rewind quite a few years before this, back to our story. Not long after we had been there, one day after school, one of the kids punched me square in the face without provocation. I walked from the bus stop at the front of the complex, over the covered bridge at the pond, to the back of the complex with blood and tears pouring down my face. My mom was rightly horrified when I got home. She took pictures in the apartment complex told her there was nothing they could do about it. Some time went by and when I went to walk from the bus stop at the front of the complex to home at the back of the complex, I noticed one of these kids following me, because he would stop every so often, then I'd look back and he'd appear again. He was trying to follow me home and see where I lived. I didn't realize it at the time, but it was because I was the only white kid in the complex. Then, a fortunate accident happened one night. My mom was chopping onions and she had her record player on while she prepared dinner. While she was chopping, she heard a knock at the door and went straight from the kitchen to see who it was. When she opened the door, the upstairs neighbor who came to ask her to turn down her music was taken aback when he saw my mom with the knife in her hand. My mom had explained his mistaken interpretation to the apartment complex, but they told her they would not be renewing her lease. Thankfully, it was onto a new city and a new apartment complex that would have a dual impact on me. It was the place I met the person who years later would tell me a story about Nicole from No No Nicole. No, no, Nicole. More on that later, and it was the place I would meet the person who taught me song structure.